Welcome to the Loopy Pro video manual. This is a series of videos getting you up and running with Loopy Pro as fast as possible. In this video, we're gonna be taking a deeper dive into the settings we talked about in the previous video, starting with record intro, and record tail. Record intro and record tail sound exactly as you think. We record an intro before the loop and we can record and keep something after the loop. This is really handy if you're creating your own percussive sounds or if you just want a loop to end without just suddenly cutting off. So to do this, we go into clip settings we can scroll down and as you can see here, we've got one shot threshold recording, record intro and record tail. So let's switch both of these on at the same time. And something to bear in mind is when you're recording the tail, it does use the threshold, the same threshold that you use for one shots. So you may want to adjust this depending on what you want as a tail. Maybe it fades out, maybe it's a splash sound, you don't want it to cut off. So you might want to adjust the dB level depending on what you want it to record and when you want that ending to stop. Now we've got this switched on, let me show you how we can record an intro. To do this, we must have a BPM set in the session beforehand. So I'm gonna set mine to 100 BPM, and if I click play, it's gonna start counting me in. Now, I can't hear it at the moment because we haven't got the metronome switched on, so let's turn that on and then I'll be able to hear it. Now we've got a BPM and we've got a metronome, and what I can do is I can record before we get back to the beginning of the bar. This will record our intro and then it will instantly start recording the loop as well. So for this example, I'm just gonna create a drum beat. Imagine we play some toms and then I'm gonna get into the drum bit itself. And then when I press stop, I'm actually gonna make a cymbal splash noise and that's gonna be the tail. Now, even though you can hear that splash noise, you can't see it on the loop. But now that's there, when I hit play, or if I hit that loop, you'll actually see a count in. So where the play button is, if I press it now, it's figured out that there's actually two bars coming in. I can turn the metronome off now, because I don't need it. And you'll notice it doesn't play the tail on the very first loop. If I stop the loop, it'll play that tail. And you notice there, in the recording of the tail, it said waiting for threshold. Now at the moment, we've actually got this set for the entire session, so every loop is gonna be like this. And you may not want that. So let's go into clip settings, and what we'll do is we'll turn it off. But instead, I'm just gonna swipe up on this loop. Now you can see that this specific loop has an intro and an outro, but if I swipe up for any of the others, they don't. Now just by getting a brand new project, I haven't turned anything on yet, but the alternative you can do is you can swipe up on that specific loop. And what we can do is we can go into record settings and we can turn this on here. This means that just this one loop has the intro and the tail, but all the others don't. And of course you can do this per loop. You could have it for different ones. Of course, this example was for drums, but maybe you need it for a four chord system and you want that tail to be the first chord again. Chord intro and record tail don't have to be together. You can just record an intro or just a tail. It's totally up to you how you want your loop to be. I really like the fact that you can do this per loop as opposed to the whole session. So you could customize this beforehand and save it before you do your performance. Something that can really speed up your loops is changing the loops themselves from record play to record overdub. This is quite a simple one, but it actually makes a lot of sense. So if we go into clip settings, we can scroll down, and as you can see here, you've got after recording. Loopy Pro is asking you, what should we do? Now by default, it's set to play. We can tell it to stop, or you can say overdub. This is how I set up a lot of loopers. For example, if I'm making harmonies, I don't have to wait an entire revolution to add that harmony in. Let me show you. Boom. This feature is simple but powerful to me because it saves time in a performance. The next one is something very visual and it's a metronome flash. This next section of the video is gonna have flashing images. So if you are photo sensitive, please bear that in mind. In the metronome, what you can do is you can turn the metronome for audio, but you can also turn it on 
for visual. And what this does is it flashes the screen. Again, a really simple thing to turn on, but if you're live on stage, maybe in a dark environment, this is really handy and a great representation of timing to cue you up and for your own brain. <laughs> So as you could see there, the bar one beat one is a green flash and then the rest of the beats are in white. The nice thing about it though, it's not just an entire flash over the whole screen, it does actually keep the colors of the loops there. <laughs> You can hear the metronome there because I turned it on, but you don't have to have the audible click, you can just have the visual. Just another feature to help you with your performance. The next one is also to do with the metronome, and that's counting. If you go to the clock itself, you can see a couple of options here, and in the settings, you have an option there which is perform counting. This will perform a counting when starting playback. If we turn this on and I press play, You can see there it counted down from four to one before playing the loops. It also gave me the metronome in audio format and then turned that off, even though I don't have that switched on. If I have the metronome switched on, then it will carry on. If I have it in the flash mode, again, for photosensitive people, we're about to flash the screen. see there it does a visual flash with the metronome the audio part of that went but you have the flash remaining of course the next part of counting is counting when recording for this we're going to need a bpm to begin with so i've got a new session here we go to the clock and you can see there's a couple of options these options only come up when we're in the brand new session and no recording has been done we have the detection range and we have the option to round to the closest bpm maybe you don't want it to be 104.36 but you want it to be 104. We can turn that on and round it to a whole number. So if I just create a tap, one, two, three, four, you can see it's saying 94. Whereas with a brand new session again, if I was to turn that off and go one, two, three, you can see here 92.25. And this is all dependent on Loopy Pro being the main source of the clock. With using things like external pedals or external devices where the main clock is with them, that is all to do with MIDI sync and will be in the next video. Now you can still use the slider, which is really handy. And I'm gonna put this up to 100 beats per minute. Now we've got a BPM, so if I tap record, it says it's waiting for the clock to start. And if I tap it a second time, it'll just go away. But if I tap it, it then says, wait for clock start. Let's start the clock. And it's gonna give me a four, three, two, one. You'll hear the metronome. And I've actually got the metronome switched off, but you'll just hear it for those four beats and then recording will begin. Now you'll notice that when you do your first loop and you've already got a BPM set, it's just recording within that boundary. And that's fine because that's what you want. You've set the BPM, so you don't need it to be anything else. When we have a brand new session and I hit record straight away with no counting, no BPM set whatsoever, then we have the option for changing what that first loop is to make sure it's the right timing. <laughs> So when you have the looper just set to play, there's no BPM, it's picked the BPM at 97, but you can see that little waveform, we've given it a click, you can see the waveforms there. And it's picked the points where you pressed the button, but you can see it's actually got a little bit after that, and we can actually play around with where it should be. If you're worried about timing, the alternative you can do, which is incredibly clever, is you can just tap the button and then make the beat you want whenever you want. Then what Loopy Pro will do is analyze the recording and guess where the BPM should be. In order to do this, we need to change the settings. So let's go back into clip settings, let's scroll down and you'll see auto loop detection. And it says automatically detect and trim the first loop of a session. So let's turn that on. So I'm gonna hit record, I'm gonna give it a gap and then I'm gonna make a beat and then I'm gonna stop and then I'm gonna carry on recording then I'm going to tap it a second time and watch what happens. That's magical. I even put the first bar of the kick drum down again and it's figured it out. Now, if it doesn't get it quite right, if you tap the little waveform next to the loop, 
you can see all the variants that it's figured out. It's done this instantly and this is magical and I think it's really, really clever. And another great option, certainly if you've got your hands full, if you've got a guitar in your hand or you're playing piano and you don't want to actually touch Loopy Pro, but you want Loopy Pro to record. Now, first time down, it actually got it right, but there's all these different options here, including the entire recording right at the bottom. But we're gonna say apply that one and that's fine. And then when we create the next loop, that little waveform will disappear. This auto detection system is really, really cool. And I would say nine times out of 10, it gets it right. Even when it doesn't, it's just a quick change. Just tap that button and choose one of the other variants and then that's locked in. Now, another way to record without actually touching the screen of Loopy Pro is threshold recording. Going into the clip settings and scrolling down, you can see you've got this option for loop audio threshold recording. We turn this on and this is where this audio threshold bar becomes really important. Now that's normally set for the one shot, but now we have this switched on. When I hit record, it's gonna say wait for threshold. I'm not gonna make a noise until I'm ready. Now, even though I went, beforehand and you can hear a little bit of intake of breath i've still got automatic loop detection switched on so two things are working for me here it won't record until it hears a sound beyond that threshold and at the same time it's trying to figure out what is the right length for this loop the automatic loop detection and the threshold recording are two things that work really well together and are really powerful. Now for this last one, I've turned off automatic loop detection and I've turned off threshold recording because we're gonna be talking about retrospective recording. I talked about this in the previous video, but I think it's one of the most unique things about Loopy Pro because it sets itself apart from any other looper that's out there. Going into clip settings and we scroll down, you have this option for recording, which is retrospective recording. Again, what this means is recording after the event. After you've made the sound, Loopy Pro is always listening and it will capture the last eight bars or the last four bars or the last two bars, depending on how you've got it set up. So as you can see right now, retrospective recording is switched off and we have the option for things like auto count out. If I turn retrospective recording on, auto count out has gone because we can't do a count out, we're doing stuff after the fact. And you have this option of immediate or quantized. It's much better to have it in quantized unless you're doing things like soundscapes and you wanna have it recording immediately the last four bars of what you did. But to begin with, I'd really recommend stay on quantized. So now with retrospective recording, the only thing you must do is put your first loop down as normal because we need to figure out what the BPM is. So now that's down. So unique and it's such a really really interesting way to create and capture loops you could come up with a flurry on your guitar and go oh i wish i captured that but with retrospective recording you can it's always listening and it's waiting for you to press that button and then it will actually capture the last part of the recording now to make this clear you still have to tell loopy pro how many bars and beats it's going to capture so as you saw in that example there i had a one bar beat but then I changed it over to two bars because I knew that I was gonna sing something a bit longer. But it means that now Loopy Pro understands that and it's actually capturing the last two bars whenever I tap that button. This is quantized retrospective recording. The alternative is if you go into retrospective recording and go immediate, and what it'll do is if you tap the button, it won't wait for the bar to get back to the beginning, it'll record the last four bars or two bars, whatever you've got, of when you tap that button, and it is immediate. The downside of immediate is if you have a two bar section or a four bar section that you play, and then you tap it a little bit too late, you're gonna cut off the very beginning of that recording, certainly if it's on bar one, beat one. Personally, I think it's much better to keep this into quantized, and it'll capture 
the preceding whole cycle within the session. Now, depending on how you have this set up, whether you've got auto loop detection, retrospective recording on, count-ins, intros, tails, you can combine these. And there's lots more ways to play with this, but I just wanted to highlight a couple of these options because they really change how Loopy Pro behaves. Now, one or two of these options we talked about today is without touching Loopy Pro itself. And the other way you can do that and also control things like AUV3 plugins, effects, is with MIDI. And that is our next video.